Hi everyone, we are releasing some really interesting data today. We are here with AFP President and CEO Andrew Watt. Thanks for joining us, Andrew. Good to be here. So as I mentioned, we are releasing data today. The AFP Compensation and Benefits Survey, known to some of you as the Salary Survey, is releasing today and there is some very interesting data. So what can you tell us about the key findings? There are, and um, just bear in mind that data sometimes is inexplicable, but I think some of the key results that are interesting are that fundraising salaries are down this year, but that overall 63% of fundraisers saw an increase in their compensation oh, over the last 12 yeah. months, which I think is fascinating. Yeah. Um, another thing that's really important to recognize is that fundraisers who are certified, so that's CFRE and ACFRE, but many other certifications as well, continue to earn more than their counterparts who are not certified. And I think that there are signs across the board that the fundraising market is very, very strong because what we're seeing is a lot of turnover, a lot of movement in jobs right now. So, but is that a good thing for fundraisers to be moving around so much? I mean, it's not building necessarily a consistent and strong fundraising program if they're constantly moving. However, it is obviously great that they're, it's showing that fundraisers are still in demand. So yeah. what's that balance? Well, I think all of us who've been in fundraising for a while recognize that quite often the only way in which you can approach personal career development um, in the current market is by moving, whether that's for better compensation, whether that's for better learning experience, or whether that's for a different job and role. Um, quite often our organizations are relatively small or relatively flat, and that therefore they make it difficult for you to progress. But I think that if you haven't read the Compass Point report under Developed, which was launched last year, you should. Because that makes a very strong point that if you're investing as an organization in philanthropy, you need to invest in your staff. And so we often look at this as being something for the, from the individual's perspective. Actually, I think we should flip that and say that all of our organizations have a responsibility to understand how we can invest in our staff, in our colleagues, and help them to grow in the job. If we did that more effectively, I think that we would see much less turnover. Yeah. And I don't want to bang on about this, but I saw Children's Hospital in um, Little Rock in Arkansas I visited with a couple of years ago. When they bring somebody on, mm -hmm. they move them from department to department within the fundraising or development division so that they get a sense of what that person's real skills are that didn't necessarily come out in the interview. And so over a six-month period, each new hire experiences the entire organization. And if they show that they're really good or suited to one particular area, then they have a commitment to place them there and go out and hire again. Now it's that kind of commitment to the people you're bringing on board who you know are strong and talented and have a huge amount to offer that we should be seeing more of. Yeah, it's really honing in on that person's skill and so it's a mutual relationship and obviously beneficial to both the individual and the organization. So that's a great model. Something else that really actually caught my eye in the summary, which you all can find online, is the continuation of the gender gap in salaries. I mean, why, why is there still a gap in, in today's day and age? And is there anything we can do about that? The question why, I, there is no answer. There is no answer that you could stand up and justify. Um, there is no reason for a gender gap in salaries. Um, what can we do about it? From an AFP perspective, I think we have to continue to highlight that issue, keep it front and centre, and make sure that people absolutely understand that um, this is an issue that should not be an issue. Yeah. Um, so we need to make sure that people are aware, employers are aware, non-profits are aware of, of, of this gap, because I don't believe that any employer goes out there when they're recruiting and they look at candidates for that job on the basis of gender and saying, yes, we'll hire here because we can pay less. Right. People do not do that. Yeah, no, I don't think so. Not not today. So it is, it is an interesting number and there are a ton of interesting numbers in this report. You can find the summary on our website and then you can also get the full report, which is free to members and just a nominal fee for non-members. That as well is on our website. Thank you for giving us your insight on this interesting data today. Thanks, Nikki. And thank you all for tuning in. Of course, check it out on our website. Thanks so much.